Hi there. Well, this is a big news day today. Episode 62. Now, it's going to be a quick one today, okay? But um, before we get to the names, Graves, Fravor, and Grush, uh, who will be appearing next week at the um, subcommittee hearing. It, w- it was a subcommittee, wasn't it? Yeah. But if you look into it, the subcommittee they're using, which makes sense for it to be in that subcommittee, the one about um, security, old, um, you know, Burchette and Luna are s- sitting on it anyway. So maybe they're guests, like special guest, um, you know, guests, special guest guests. Anyway, before we get to talking about Grush, Favor, and Graves, I need to tell you just briefly about a wonderful day I had in London. It was lovely going to London a couple of days ago. And I went to have an appointment with my cardiologist. Now, I won't go into the details, but essentially this this guy, I've known him for a long, long time, like decades. And he is uh, connected to go to episode um, one, origin story, if you want the deep dive into my heart condition. <laughs> but um, to cut a long story short, I've always been an outpatient of cardiologists, okay? And this guy is connected, my cardiologist at the moment is connected to used to work with the guys that looked after me when I was a little baby. Yeah. And, um, but now I'm a big man, aren't I? And so it was really lovely to see him again. I hadn't seen him for about, um, well, since 2016. So what's that? Seven years? I can't, my maths is terrible. Yeah, I think it's seven years, isn't it? Yeah. And um, it was amazing to see him. And he was very pleased with me, you know, And I was very pleased with him and we were talking and I started talking about, you know, the podcast, obviously. And um, he started crying. It was a really odd situation. And I kind of thought, well, you know, maybe it's sparked something for him. Um, And I said to him, I can tell by the tears in your eyes that you've probably been crying forever. The stars in the sky don't mean nothing to you. There are mirrors. And he said, I don't want to talk about it. And I said, if I stay just a little bit longer, if I stay, will you listen to my heart? And then he pointed to a sign on the wall, uh, like a kind of something I hadn't seen before and it said here are the blimps so Burchette is giving a press conference and will be literally talking as I talk so uh, let's have a couple of seconds as to what's going on in that press conference For decades, countless of Americans have questioned our government's lack of transparency regarding UAPs in our nation's airspace. These same questions have been echoed by many leaders on a bipartisan basis, from Jimmy Carter to Barack Obama. And this morning, they also released a... So this is the Committee on Oversight and Accountability. They released a press release. They released a press release. National Security Subcommittee to hold hearing on unidentified anomalous phenomena. Washington, the Subcommittee on National Security, the Border and Foreign Affairs will hold a hearing entitled You Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena, Implications on National Security, Public Safety and Government Transparency. The Subcommittee hearing will explore first-hand accounts of unidentified anomalous phenomena and assess the federal government's transparency and accountability regarding UAP's possible threats to U.S. national security. This hearing will also highlight legislative efforts to bring transparency to to UAPs and require the federal government to provide the American people with information about potential risks to public safety and national security. The Pentagon, so this is a quote by Tim Burchett, um, the Pentagon and Washington bureaucrats have kept this information hidden for decades, and we're finally going to shed some light on it. We're bringing in credible witnesses who can provide public testimony because the American people deserve the truth. We're done with the cover-ups. Yeah. I added the yeah. 
So, and now we've got Graves, Fravor, and Grush. And I expect in, you know, kind of our world, you know, everyone knows who they are. So Ryan Graves, he encountered uh, UAPs in um, 2015. And I'm going to quote from a political article that I link. Um, I joined the US Navy in 2009 and underwent years of rigorous training as a pilot. Specifically, we were trained to be expert observers in identifying aircraft with our sensors and our own eyes. It's our job to know what's in our operating area. That's why in 2014, after upgrades were made to our radar system, our squadron made a startling discovery there were unknown objects in our airspace. Initially, the objects were showing up on our newly upgraded radars, and we assumed they were ghosts in the machine or software glitches. But then we began to correlate the radar tracks with multiple surveillance systems, including infrared sensors that detect heat signatures. Then came the hair-raising near misses that required us to take evasive action. These were no mere blooms. The unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, accelerated at speeds up to Mach 1, the speed of sound. They could hold their position, appearing motionless, despite Category 4 hurricane force winds of 120 knots. They did not have any visible means of lift, control services, or propulsion. In other words, nothing that resembled normal aircraft with wings, flaps, or engines, and they outlasted our fighter jets, operating continuously throughout the day, I am a formally trained engineer, but the technology that dem they demonstrated defied my understanding. So that's Ryan Graves. He's obviously the um, host of Merged podcast. He's done some fantastic interviews with uh, a whole bunch of people, Lex Friedman, Joe Rogan, um, and also there's lots of information out there about him. But what I expect that he'll be talking about uh, to the uh, at the hearing is his new initiative, which is called Americans for Safe Aerospace. Okay, so this is basically um, Congress passed the National Defense Authorization Act of 2023 with provisions to establish a secure system to collect information about UAP from witnesses. The DOD has not yet set up a public facing website for witnesses to come forward. In this interim, senators have invited witnesses to come forward to their staff and have asked for help identifying witnesses willing to come forward. Americans for Safe Aerospace is committed to supporting witnesses who want to do so. Okay, so I expect that he's going to be speaking to that audience of people that are going to be watching that know the score, and they know that, uh, you know, um, Grush is an example of somebody that can come forward and ignore the, you know, kind of people that are trying to um, tear him down as best as possible. And the uh, kind of whistleblower protection will um, take care of him. Okay. And um, uh, Ryan's website, which is safeaerospace.org, is designed for you to get in contact with um, the senators or receive help. Ryan is obviously kind of outspoken about this, but also uh, several of our air crew leadership council, including David Fravor and Alex Dietrip, were the first Navy pilots to come forward to Congress about UAP. So they've got that experience that they can speak to people that are thinking of blowing the whistles, thinking of coming forward. Um, and also Chris, Mellis, Chris Mellon is an advisor as well. So Chris might help as well, might he? Yeah. So that's Ryan Graves. Next, we've got David Fravor. I mean, what to say about David Fravor? Absolutely extraordinary leader. Um, you know, the Tic Tac encounter is um, probably the most extraordinary uh, unsolved recent case from 2004. Um, I'm sure that you know all about the Tic Tac encounter, but he's very, very good communicator, David Fravor. Interestingly, um, Fravor and Graves, Fravor was a guest on Graves' Merged podcast just a couple of weeks ago. And interestingly, Fravor is, you know, quite speaks quite um, complimentarily about Bob Lazar. 
So if I was Burchette or Luna or one of the other guys sitting on this panel, I would say, could you please assess the credibility of Bob Lazar, which would be very, very interesting for Fravor to start talking about um, about Lazar. But I expect that Fravor is going to be an absolutely extraordinary witness. And then finally, we've got Grush. Now, if Grush says to the uh, House of Representative Oversight Committee members what he's told Ross Coulthard, then that is going to make news around the world. There's no question about that. Um, my you know, wish would be for them to talk about um, agreements. I expect that this is going to, um, you know, be be a, a kind of headline maker, you know, because Grush Grush did make headlines, but him talking to Ross Coulthard on News Nation is different from him giving evidence at a hearing for you know the for the Congress. So uh, it's a fantastic trio. I'm very happy to say that I guessed the trio yesterday, which was great. So, um, <laughs> so I'm available if you want to, you know, do a bit of the old, give me some coin. I'll do a bit of the old remote viewing for you. Yeah, no worries. And um, yeah, there we go. Anyway, lovely little quick episode. Give you the big news. Now it's Wednesday, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern time. I've got on my Twitter feed, like times around the world. Um, let me just see if I can find that quickly for you. So, for instance, I'm going to be in, you know, you know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in Crete, aren't I? Yeah. So, Crete, it is 7 p.m. in the evening. London, 3 p.m. This is Wednesday the 26th, I'm talking, yeah? So, it's 10 a.m. in Washington, D.C. Um, so, what's that in um, L.A.? Is that 5 a.m. in L.A., I think, yeah? Is it 5 hour difference, I think? in the east coast and the west coast yeah maybe um anyway 3 p.m london 4 p.m brussels 5 p.m crete 5 30 egypt 7 30 p.m india 8 oh sorry mumbai um uh, 10 o'clock at night in beijing 11 o'clock at night in tokyo and midnight midnight at the oasis in Australia, thank you very much. I do one from Crete. Do one from Crete <laughs> uh, with my assessment of how it all goes down. Get the popcorn. Get the beers. As, as um, Chris Sharp says, you know, I'm going to get the beers and the popcorn. Yeah, sounds good, man. Anyway, have a good one and see you later. <laughs>